what is going on guys welcome back to another video today i'm answering some of your comments like this one from brian how about experimenting with cannabis there is not a lot of tissue culture info on this plant well i actually do have a lot of experience working with hemp which is a very similar plant the and i would like to work with cannabis as well the issue is that it's not legal for me to grow here in tennessee and you may think that i'm actually living on, on washington dc but i actually um, the company is the headquarters is on Washington DC. However, I live in Tennessee. No, no state income tax. Uh, anyways, um, if I can see if I can get some of the permits for hemp, I may try to do that in the future. Uh, however, um, I've been get a lot, I get a lot of questions regarding uh, about cannabis, and I think I want to make a video just to give my opinion to see if. Um, if it's the right thing to do for you, you you want to do experiment with cannabis because in my opinion, if you want to conserve your genetics, yes, I think it's uh, tissue culture is a great option. However, if you want to grow uh, cannabis used to to multiple plants uh, because tissue culture is well known for you start with one plant and then you have thousands and thousands of plants. That's probably not a good idea uh, with cannabis, uh, and I will explain why. So, but for now, I think I, the I can, want to make a video, but I will see if I can get the permits to work with with hemp. So stay tuned. Next question. Thanks for the video. Can I autoclave TDC together with the medium or not? Uh, yes, you can autoclave uh, TDC. Uh, TDC is a synthetic uh, cytokinin. And most of the synthetic hydrocannabinoids you can, um, or most of the synthetic uh, plant growth regulators, you can autoclave. Uh, some of the natural um, um, hormones, those probably you want to add those after um, sterilization and after the media has cooled down to about 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, but yes, you can definitely uh, autoclave uh, TDC. Question from Elsie. The explant contains multiple types of differentiated and undifferentiated cells. Does this matter that so most plants retain tito potency? Co couldn't you use any part of the plant? Is it faster to use differentiated versus undifferentiated cells? Uh, well, um, on some plants, you, I mean, in theory, yes, you can use any part of the plant. In practice, it's very, very difficult. Uh, basically, uh, let's say if I'm working with, um, with this um, with this philodendron, uh, it's way easier to use uh, a node of the plant. Uh, that basically contains part of the apicomer stem, and it's going to take a lot faster. If I want to use a leaf, I can. What I would have to do is use the leaf. Uh, obviously, I had to sterilize it, and then I would have to make um, take some part of the leaves. And what would happen is that uh, it's not going to make plants immediately, I would have to create um, callus first, so I would have to make callus media, and then from callus I would have to go to shooting. This sounds very easy, however it's, it's not, but it's not that simple. It, it, takes, it may take a, a long time to do, so it's just a lot easier just to, to use the notes. Um, on some plants, let's say like um, uh, Venus fly traps, uh, pinguicula, droseras, um, African violets, um, geraniums, or some some of these uh, succulents. Some of these plants that you know you can uh, make like a leaf pullings. You can you can use the, the leaves instead. Uh, but on some of the other plants, it use a lot easier. You can just get a, a part of the node which contains the apicomeri stem. The peroxide melted the gel and gum, but not the agar in my case. So I this is referring to um, what happened is uh, on what I use. Um, if you have followed some of my sterilization videos, I use um, to rinse the the bleach. I use hydrogen peroxide and then and then some vinegar. And what happens a lot of times is uh, you use gel and gum or gelsam uh, as your gelling agent. The hydrogen peroxide that is left on the explant can precipitate the media. That basically what happens is that the media just turns into liquid. It can partially do that where some of the 
some of the media is liquid, some of the media is still solid, or completely made the, the media uh, liquid. So if you are using my method, my sterilization method, you probably want to use agar instead, like, um, like he mentioned, and I think if you use agar, you can have a better results. Far life NC, would love to see tissue corto from combs or bulbs? Uh, yes, that is on my list. Uh, I will try to do those um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, right now I've been kind of busy, uh, but I think, um, especially right now, I can probably get a lot of bowls for pretty cheap because uh, they kind of we are by the end of the planting season for a lot of these bulbs. So uh, I should be able to, to work on some of these, uh, not only from, from Cala Lily or some of those plants, but probably asiatic lilies or um man i already forgot what other both plants uh, like tulips uh, or some other plants like that i think that would be pretty cool to do what were the results of your different sterilization protocols i would like to know this is referring to the video one of the actually first videos i made uh, whenever we had the the old lab um, on sterilizing carnivorous plant seeds. So I use Nepenthes and Saracenia. And I can tell you the Saracenia didn't work, uh, but I, it was not the fault of the PPM. Uh, I have very bad seeds. Uh, I tried to sterilize, uh, I, I'm sorry, I tried to germinate those on sphagnum moss and none of them came out. So I need to repeat the experiment. Um, I will see if I can get some more Saracenia seeds, although they are no, it's kind of late on the season. I think I will have to wait all the way until fall to get more seeds. Um, for the Nepenthes, actually, they germinated, and I show you, I did show you that on the on the lab update. Um, so the experiment was, I did um, five percent ppm and three times the MS MSO. Uh, MS so the way I mix it was, um, should probably go take a look on the video just to to see if it will make sense. But what I basically what I did is. Uh, I added the, the three times the amount of MS salts uh, and 5% uh, PPM to a state of water. And I did um, two hours, four hours, six hours, and eight hours. And the best result by far was the six hours. Uh, that's where I got the higher germination rate. Although I will, I will say that PPM does inhibit some of the germination um, in the Nepenthes seeds. Uh, I think the best result I got was close to 30%. Now the seeds were actually very fresh. Uh, th those, were, those seeds were from a friend who is local and he gave me the seeds the same day he harvested them. And uh, the, the seeds he, he planted on sphagnum, he got close to 95% germination rate. So it was the PPM that inhibits some of the germination. Uh, however, um, I got the, the seeds, they're actually growing in tissue culture and I'm very happy. It's actually in the Pentestum Cata and I'm very happy to have it. So even though I only got 30%, it just doesn't matter. I mean, I got more than 10 plants growing in tissue culture right now. And even, even if I have 100% germination rate for the uh, close to 100, 100 uh, no, he gave me close to about 50 seeds. So, and I got about about 10 plants right now, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I know that on the long run, uh, in a couple of months, I want to have more plants in tissue cultor than I would otherwise have if I have plant those in sphagnum moss. So even though I have a low germination rate, it just doesn't matter. Uh, if you can get the plants into tissue cultor, that's okay. I, in the long run, you're going to have a lot more plants than, than that. Sir, do you use a humidifier in your growing drags? Love your work. Uh, well, thank you. And I do not use a humidifier on my growing room. Um, actually, the, the, op the opposite I would sometimes I would use where the humidity can be quite high. I live in Tennessee. Uh, humidity is pretty high a lot of the times during the summer. So I do not use a humidifier. Uh, I do use um, an air filter. Um, Obviously, I have the laminar flow hood, uh, but I also have a room um, filter. Um, I don't really keep it on the lab. I mostly keep it on this room where this is my room, and I do have quite a lot of allergies. 
but the pretty much the lab and this room is basically connected to the hall and most of the times the the door is open so i just run it here during, most of the times at night i uh, use for my allergies and but that's it i don't know i don't have a humidifier on this on, on my lab great video are you doing philodendrons straight into multiplication media now you mentioned your BA and IAA on this one, although in small concentrations. Early, you recommended to go first into normal media to get established your first. Um, yes, uh, why not? And the reason I'm doing multiplication now is that I have more experience um, doing some of these philodendrons, so I just directly go into multiplication media. However, if you are use experimental the first time, uh, you may want to use um, use plain media and the main reason is just to save money some of these uh, uh, plant grow regulators can be quite expensive so you probably don't want to use waste a lot of your materials uh, but that's that's it um, if you get a lot more experience if you can get some of these plants growing uh, establishing tissue quarter you then you can just probably go ahead and add some of the plant grow regulators from Anthony, what about inducing multiplication and rooting which are used in PGRs? I've been hearing in the cannabis industry of people achieving this. Can you please give any thoughts? Thank you. Um, yes, and thank you for your question because I want to use it as probably one of the videos for where I want to have an extended answer. And the reason I'm I, I including this on, 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 on this Q&A is because I don't have a full answer yet. Uh, I would do some more, more research. Uh, but what happened is, uh, and especially on cannabis, why they don't use uh, plant grow regulators is because some of them can be considered as a herbicide by the EPA. Uh, some of your IBAs, IAA, uh, those axins, they are actually considered as pesticides. So there are no, you are not allowed to use them on some states. So every time I get a, a question about cannabis and they ask me, okay, what media should you, rec uh, you recommend me to use? I ask them, oh, I tell them, okay, I can recommend you this media. However, you need to check on your uh, local regulations as each state has different rules. Uh, the best, um, like I say, because some of those um, plant grow regulators can be considered as a herbicide. So the best thing to, to do is you can uh, send an email or a phone call to your um, local um, um, local station agent. Uh, your station agent, uh, they work with the universities and they will know uh, your regulations, the, whatever regulation you have to follow. If they don't know the answer, is their job to find out from whoever knows the answer but they have contacts and they they should be able to help you out from black dragon botany are you able to do alocasia would be interesting to know if it works from shoes or if also possible from bulbs uh, i actually i used gold one um very recently i used gold on a plant sale local plant sale and i got this um the dra dragon scale so I, may, I will have to wait until it grows a bit more because this is the only one I want, I have. And hopefully whenever I get more, more shoots, I'll be able to, to work with this plant. But I already have it. And like I said before, if um, any of you uh, would like to recommend me more plants to work with, just let me know. Uh, I would see if I can find it. It may take me a while. Uh, I may have to do something similar like this where I, find, I got one plant and i will have to wait until i get it propagates more but i trying to see if i can get as many plants as you recommend me and then work with them in the future please do carpeting aquatic plants and anubias video i should probably do that um, um it will be pretty easy for me to find some of these plants on my local fish store so i should probably i want to add that to my list and hopefully i will get that into in the next couple of weeks from Sarah, would this work the same way using a node or do you need the bottom part of the rhizome? Uh, yes, you can use the node, uh, it will be the same thing. Um, I use the, the whole plant uh, basically because uh, it was a small a small plant, but you can definitely, if you have a big plant, use a node. Uh, that will be the easy way, you use that. I just have a smaller plants. 
so that's what I use. But yes, you can definitely use the, the note and I definitely recommend to do that. From Omar, please, I want to understand how you didn't use water for washing from the sterilization effect. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, what you're referring is why I use, um, basically why I didn't use sterile out of clay water to rinse the, the bleach from from the explant. From This is from the Philodendron Mia video. And the reason I didn't do that, uh, first of all, um, instead of using uh, sterile water, I use hydrogen peroxide uh, and, and, the, and, and, and the vinegar. Um, and another reason is because um, I only use 1% bleach. I didn't, uh, most people will use 10%, 15%, or even 20%, and that's a lot. And that does damage. If you don't, if you don't rinse it, it does damage the, the tissue. And also, uh, another thing, if you, if you see in my videos, I never cut the ends of my explants. And uh, basically because I don't need, I don't have to, because I use a very mild sterilization uh, bleach uh, solution. So I don't have to cut the ends. So that's why I really like my, my sterilization method. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I rinse the, the bleach using hydrogen peroxide and the vinegar. You can probably rinse the hydrogen peroxide and vinegar with some sterile water, but it's not really necessary. So I just don't, don't do it. And also saves me time because I don't have to sterilize some water and put it into the aeroclave. So. From Travis, this video is showing as a restricted. You have a great videos. Uh, well, thank you, and it's due to messing up again. Um, I don't know why. Whenever um, I doing some of these um, tissue culture videos, and I use say propagation, it, it use uh, a restricted. It, it just I don't know what is going on. Um, it's very easy for us to use to to. Um, make a claim and then we just get it solved. Uh, but it is annoying, it is a YouTube thing. So sorry about that. From Gustavo, muchas gracias por tus videos. Me encantaría empezar esto como un hobby. Saludos, me encantaría ver orquídeas. So he's saying, uh, thanks for the videos. Uh, I would love to start this as a hobby and I would love to see orchids. Uh, well, thank you so much. And yes, uh, orchids is definitely on my list. Um, it's, it's difficult to find seeds, um, but I will, I will get into that, um, hopefully very soon. From Bioplantec, what's the media? And this is referring to the Monstera Deliciosa. So it is currently a multiplication media, and the media is full MS media, 30 grams of sucrose, 5 milliliters per liter of BA, 0 0.3 milliliters per liter of NAA, uh, two milliliters per liter of PPM and three grams per liter of Gelango, which you can also substitute for, for six to eight grams of agar. From Emmanuel, excuse me, I want to know which is the best book as an introductory test for micropropagation or tissue culture, thanks. Well, by far the best book um, is Plants from Test Tubes. You can find this on Amazon. I believe it costs about $23 to $25. Um, I have the book. Um, I don't have it here, uh, but it is a very good book. It goes all the way from the beginning. Uh, any, you can give this book to somebody who doesn't know anything about tissue culture, and he can learn so much just from that book. It is a very good book. Um, I think it's more on the beginner side. Yes, uh, for some people who have a lot of experience, it is definitely great to, to have it. As just um, just to, to read it, just for why not. But uh, it's mostly based for beginners. Uh, I think for somebody who have experience, uh, like I, I read it, I, I read it, and then sometimes I take some reference from that book. But for me, it's things that I know, so I don't, I don't, like I said, I, I, I have it, but I don't even have it here, so I don't even use it that much. But it is a great book for beginners. Okay, so in my latest uh, Monstera Deliciosa update, I asked um, what plants you want me to work with, and I give up options about working with, like Philodendron, uh, Brazil, with which I have here, which actually I already have in tissue culture, and it's actually doing great. Uh, video coming soon. 
uh, or plants like uh, carnivorous plants like nepenthes and you can see a lot of, a lot of people have a say about nepenthes uh, so I think it's um it's great. I will do some uh, Nepenthes sterilization coming soon. Uh, I was going to do it actually last week, but I got uh, I was really really busy where actually I was out of town. So hopefully I will get that uh, time to do sometime record a video this week, and hopefully I will get, be able to get it out uh, either in the next week or the following week. The Philodendron Brazil also got some balls as well. Some of the uh, monsteras and some of the other house plants so um, i will still want to work with a diverse amount of plants and then i will keep posting over the next couple of weeks so my goal is to probably do one sterilization video per week and and see how it goes um, if it does well i may do uh, increase the amount of videos uh, i do per per month so and see how it goes and lastly from craig uh, cephalotus follicularis you should do the cephalotus. That's your, you are the expert on cephalotus tissue culture. Anyways, uh, thanks for, for the for the plan. I just bought some plants from him. Actually, they, in tissue culture. Um, he was sending some plants in tissue culture. I just bought some plants from him. And he, he sent me some extra cephalotus. And I think I need to to give it a give it a plug. And you should probably go check his uh, his um, his store at uh, on eBay on uh, Crazy Craig Carnivorous Plant. Uh, he have over 5,000 um, positive feedbacks. Uh, he have a hundred percent positive feedbacks. Uh, so if you're looking for um, for carnivorous plants. Um, you, uh, uh, Craig is a is a very great seller. Um, pretty cool guy, and he has some some very great plants. So um, you should definitely go check him out. Anyways, I hope you have make it all the way to the end of the video. And if you have more questions, just leave it down in the comments, and I will make a video. Um, I don't know, I I'm still don't know if I'm going to make it as like a monthly or every like two weeks. Um, for right now, for the amount of comments, I think I'm going to keep it as a monthly. Uh, if the amount of comments start to pick up, I may do every two weeks. And and I try to do all the comments, but some some of these comments are repetitive, so, um, so I want to probably skip those. And anyways, I hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying these tissue culture videos, be sure to follow us on social media for more informative content. And if you're interested in conducting your own tissue culture experiments, make sure to check us out at plantcelltechnology.com for all the products you need to get started. Use the code FP10 for 10% off your first purchase.